Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in St. Petersburg, Florida. We're right beside the Gulf of Mexico. It's just a few houses down this direction. And what we're doing is we are waterproofing the side, the outside exterior walls of this house. Let me show you what's going on, give you some idea of how to do this yourself. Okay, so you guys can understand what the problem is and what we're talking about by seeing efflorescence come up through the grout. Can you see it here? This is a brand new floor and they did a nice job of grouting, but this white material right here, you can see it kind of flakes off. This is efflorescence. And what efflorescence is, is actually sodium. It's a reaction between cement, which is grout, um, and water. And when you get enough water under the floor or in the block, that efflorescence is going to form. It's going to get pushed up through the block or through the wall. In this case, it comes up through the grout. And it's kind of like all over the place. Can you see it? It's all over the place. And we're getting more to the interior of the house. A lot of times we only see it on the outside, you know, the outside wall. See, there's the window. So basically, inside the house, there's a brand new tile floor. And inside of each tile where they grouted it, there is efflorescence. And it's coming up all throughout the house, even in the interior of the house. So what we need to do is we need to parge, that's what we call it, parge the outside wall. And that's where we dig down to the footer, we clean off the wall, then we install the footer tile. Some people call it a French drain, but we call it a footer tile because it sits at the footer level. We're gonna trench all along here, and it'll come over to our sump basin. Back in the corner there by the lanai, we come back that direction, and it'll go to a sump pump. The sump pump's gonna lift it up and send it all the way out to the front. So that's just part, part A of this job. This is something that you guys could do yourselves, but let me take, show you something that's really makes people not wanna do it. Can you see the roots here where Matt's digging? These roots, they're not great big, but they're like a mat. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> they're like a mat. <laughs> and it's very difficult to dig through, but once you get through that first layer of roots, you'll be able to dig very easily. Secret is to make your trench wide enough, see how Matt's cutting it on the side? Make it wide enough that you can get down and get your shovel in there to get out some soil. So in addition to the footer tile that we laid down at the footer level, we are gonna clean off the wall. All you see is the stucco portion, but we're gonna clean that wall all the way down to the footer and we'll pull off all the roots that have grown in through, you know, under the floor because water travels along those roots and gets under the floor also. Break all those off, cut it off, clean it, and then we're gonna seal the wall with liquid rubber. And we use uh, Blackjack number 57, which is a liquid rubber compound. It's actually a damp proofing compound, and it is made for block. And it really does a great job of keeping moisture from entering the block. However, if you did this without the footer tile, you would not achieve anything. You must have a place for water to go. Without that, ceiling is not gonna do very much. So while we're here, you can see the white markings. We're gonna put a catch basin over here, a little bit of yard drain, gravel perforated pipe, or easy flow. And that line will come over, it'll tie in, and go over to the sump pump as well. And also another low spot, you can see the white marking, we'll put a catch basin there, bring all that together. This is a separate system. And the discharge is actually the sump pump. In other words, it's just like going to the end of your line where gravity would go. We're gonna send gravity over to the sump basin. The sump pump is a lift station. It lifts it up and we can send it wherever we want. So we can put quite a bit of lines coming into the sump pump because it can handle so much water. In addition, we're gonna hook up the downspout. That's another separate line that comes over to the sump. So for the do-it-yourselfer, what are the hazards of this job? Well, you can see right away, let's just pull it up. You can see all the utilities, power, cable, uh, whatever, it's all coming down and it's going underground and you can see where it goes right there to the side of the house. So always call and get those utilities located. That's one real big thing that you need to be aware of. The second thing is when we come out to a job, we always locate that water line. And you can see how sh my hand isn't even down to the bottom of this box. This is how shallow the water lines are here in Florida. They're just six, eight inches under the ground. So we need to make sure that we can get to the shut off in case we do hit that line. The very big possibility that line's coming straight across the house and we're gonna cross it a couple of times. This house also has reclaimed water. So 
this is for this irrigation system and you can see how this, you can see the pipe it's less than eight inches deep and we'll probably cross that as well well i know we will but but we need to know how to shut that off so i always open up the boxes on both sides that way the guys know where they are and we have a tool um, you could use vice grips just to make turn that handle on this box vice grips work really good you can just turn the handle you know the shut off valve and shut it off if you break the line so other obstacles is definitely irrigation. Irrigation is pretty easy to fix, but you see these, these are control lines. And the control lines, they control the valves that pop up the different zones, the different heads. If you cut a control line, you can see how many colors there are. Hopefully they're color coded so that you can easily make the repair. But that's a whole nother ball game and a whole nother video. But this is just one of the hazards as well as the electric cable and power all those other things I just showed you. You can see where the water line comes in right here and they actually have a shutoff for the house which is great but if we break that line the shutoff will be out at the street. And really the biggest obstacle on this job is the tree roots and they've grown right up to the house so it's going to take us a little longer than normal to go ahead and you know, clear the root system just to be able to dig and you can see the size of the roots those are actually pine roots these are palms but we've got giant pines all along i see an oak over there lots of other roots here besides pine pine trees are or excuse me palm trees are very easy to dig through but you can see how quick chuck dug down the basin once you get under that root system piece of cake so Chance is right on top of the footer here. I can hear him scraping it. And we need to get down right along the side of it, right beside the footer. We want to put our footer pipe right beside the footer. Not, we could put it on top, it's below the floor, but I like to be right beside it. A lot of people ask, you know, what do we use to seal the wall? Well, we're here at Lowe's. You can see all kinds of different sealers here. And they all work great. But what we like to use is blackjack rubber coat number 57 so always get that one if you're going to use that and then don't forget that you need these brushes these are real stiff brushes and you need a couple of these if you got a couple of people to be able to paint that foundation wall okay so it's time to set up our Zoller M98 and you can take a look this is the box that it comes in you can see American made this is made in Louisville Kentucky inside the box you got the pump and you also have your warranty card to keep this. I always say keep the box because it's got some nice instructions on it as well, but it's up to you. So, so what do you need to set up a Zoller M98? It's really simple. You're gonna need a hacksaw. You need a cordless drill with a 5 16 inch nut driver. You need some good glue. By the way, this is all in one. Uh, means it's got the primer and the glue built in. You're going to need an inch and a half threaded male adapter, which will screw directly into the port on the side of the pump. You can't miss it. It's right there. You put this in hand tight. Just as tight as you can make it with your hand. Next, you need a piece of inch and a half PVC. And this is, we call this a riser. This riser is just going to send this up a little higher than this protection bar. We want to make sure that we get above that protection bar and then we're going to put on a check valve. A check valve only allows water to flow one direction and it's held together with no hubs with stainless steel clamps. Works really good. This thing will last a lifetime. This sets on the top and you'll screw all this together. I want to show you how. So you need a little riser. Cut a small piece of inch and a half PVC this is, going to, this is going to go from the male adapter that you just screwed into the pump to just above the float protection bar. Can you hear that float? And then from that, you'll put your check valve on. Check valves always have a marking to show you which way the water flows. This is to prevent water from coming back down the line and it's held together with the no hubs. That'll set on the top, we'll tighten that up. Finally, you need to drill a pressure relief. That's recommended now on all pumps. Although Zoller does have a little port to let water out, they still recommend that you put this pressure relief right here, 3 16 inch hole. So we've already cut our pipe. Let's go ahead and 
put some glue on, a good amount of glue, both, try to do both pieces. In other words, do the pipe and the fitting. Push it down in, give it a little twist, and hold it in place just for a second. Perfect. Next, loosen up, loosen up the proper, <laughs> loosen up the proper no hub clamp. Remember that there's markings on your check valve. You'll know which one I'm talking about because there's usually arrows telling you the direction of water flow. That slides onto the riser. Pull your no hub clamp back down. Oops. There's usually a slot that that sits in. You can't miss it. 5 16 inch nut driver and tighten this up just as tight as you can make it. Perfect. Believe it or not, that's it. This pump is ready to be installed down into the sump basin. From the sump basin, I'll kind of show you what it looks like. There's going to be another riser that comes off the top and then it will turn with a 90. And this is going to come out the side of the basin because we are all underground. You will not see anything here except the lid of the sump basin. But that's it guys. That's that quick. And this pump, wow. <laughs> I, I love it. You know, there's lots of good pumps on the market, but this Zoller is a cast iron. It's very heavy, um, but the cast iron dissipates the heat so it can run for hours, days, months, um, and never burn out. So, I really recommend the Zoller if you're going to get one. Okay, let's go ahead and put this pump into the sump basin. So we're loading up the barrels with soil because we have to take it all away. And basically we just run it up the ramp. We send it all the way to the front of the trailer. We want to get as much in here as possible. So we send it all the way and then we dump it. And we'll continue that. You can see it probably take us about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We'll have all that soil removed. Then we'll take that, haul it away, dump it, and we'll come back if we need to and get more soil. Tomorrow we bring gravel and the pipe. We seal the wall and we're done. You'd never know we were in the city. <laughs> we got these chickens running all over the place. According to the neighbors, they'd love for us to take them home and have a chicken dinner. <laughs> but just kind of showing you. Run our wheelbarrows right up to the front, dump them, pick up that barrel, just spit it out. Got a nice little assembly line going. We're almost done moving that soil. And tomorrow we'll bring the gravel, seal that wall, finish installing the rest of the pipe. And we're hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. So today we're gonna finish up this waterproofing job. Let me show you what we're doing, take a look, and I'm sure we'll give you a lot of tips, good advice, and make this really easy if you do it yourself. Okay, quick review. Um, yesterday we went ahead and trenched along this wall. You can see we've got it all exposed and washed it off. We'll go ahead and rewash it. They've got a little bit of algae right there. We'll use a pressure washer and knock that off. Then we're going to go ahead and seal this wall with liquid rubber. After that dries, we will go ahead and put in our gravel perforated pipe, which is we're using the Easy Flow, the Styro Rock, I call it, which works really good in this particular soil. Um, we'll lay that. We're going to actually put gravel to grade so that there's both. We get both systems. We get both gravel and the Easy Flow, which works really good. So we've got all this done, and got a man back here. He's pulling out these tree roots because you can see these tr these tree roots. So take a look at the root system that grows right into your foundation. And you can see there's big roots that grow along the outside, but they're attached to the wall and they're actually penetrating. There's microscopic holes through there or, you know, larger holes. And that water travels through that root along the root and gets under the floor. It may not seem like a lot, but it's quite a bit. And this water gets under the floor. It also rises up and gets under your floor. And then you have problems inside the house. You could have problems so bad that you actually see water. Uh, most people have a typical problem where the floor, if you've got hardwood floors, they're going to be buckling, they'll be scarring. If you have a tile floor, you have efflorescence. And that's what's going on here is efflorescence. But we'll pull all those off, clean it off, wash it off again, and then we'll paint it with a liquid rubber just to kind of show you the area. 
And remember, it runs all the way around. We've got our sump basin installed. We'll go ahead and hook the sump pump up and get this side done today. So the stone that we're using here, this is limestone, and it's actually very clean. It's what we use for, for drain fields, leach beds, some people call them up north. And the water perks right through this stuff, just right, right through it, works really good. Three quarter inch to inch and a half stone, typical, normal. We're gonna put all of that stone back here. We'll use the easy flow as the main system, and then we'll put the stone on top of that and bring that all to grade. Okay, so let's set this sump pump down in the basin. We don't need to line it up exactly yet, but we get it started. And what we're gonna have is an inch and a half pipe that's coming out underground, okay? So we're gonna drill a two inch hole here for the inch and a half PVC discharge. We're also gonna have it attach the footer tile here as well. And you can see this trench, it's coming in down here. This is from the yard drains. Okay, using a two inch hole saw and your handy dandy drill, Black & Decker or Craftsman, <laughs> we're gonna drill our discharge. Notice I set a 90 here on top of the check valve to give me some idea of where to cut this hole. So I can see where it's gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and drill through here. Real quick and easy, if you have a good hole saw, it goes really quick. So now I can send my inch and a half through and we'll make the measurement from here. You can see it still needs a small little short riser to make that connection. And we're all set to put the Okay, so I've got the glue and you can see it lines perfectly up. Just twist and hold. And this is ready to go. Okay, I cut the inlet here with a four inch hole saw. I cut an inlet here with a four inch hole saw. We've got one more to do on this side. Let's do that. Now we're ready to install the pipe. So you can see we're putting the liquid rubber on kind of get over here and let you see so what we do is we paint just up above grade the final grade we just want to be just above grade maybe an inch or two and then we're going to lay our easy flow the styro rock starts down at that end down there and we'll couple all that together it goes all the way down to and around to the sump pump and you can see the discharge line here beginning for the sump pump. This is all underground. When we finish this, the only thing you will see is that lid of that sump basin. And of course, you'll see gravel because we're going to bring that to grade. But this is protecting the foundation. So as water rises up, it'll enter our system, be carried over to the sump pump. Sump pump lifts it up and we send that all the way out to the street. So we got our gravel coming in. You can see we're just starting to fill it. Takes quite a bit of gravel to backfill a wide trench, but we got plenty of gravel. We're coming around, we've got our downspout attached, we've got it all hooked up, except for this yard drain line. That'll be the last thing that we put in. And I'm gonna actually use a piece of Easy Flow over here as well to help pick up even more groundwater because this is very low back here. And the cat station will pick up, you know, a lot of the surface water, which is what it is. But because it's so low, we can grab even more with a little piece of yard drain. Looking real good. Okay, you can see our discharge comes out in a four inch grate. We're still cleaning up here, but you can see how this system sets up. This is four inch solid pipe. It actually, the four inch begins here at the downspout. It goes down and there's a T right here. The inch and a half PVC is in this trench and it attaches to the gravity drain. You can see we graveled all of this. A lot of extra gravel here because we're so wide and he wanted to bring that to grade, which is fine. It's all good. This downspout turns underground, ties into the sump basin. Footer tile from that corner over there comes this direction. And then we have one more over here that we're still working on <laughs> but this is another yard drain we've graded all of this this direction so it comes right here and then we've got a french drain 
you know, the gravel perforator pipe that runs through and goes over to the sump basin. So the system should keep this section really, really dry, no problems. And we'll finish this up here today. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.